I swallow self-doubt like a pill when I rise, in hopes to shut the scream of the tracks racing in my mind. I'm the only one to blame. The enemy and myself are the same. It has to be a certain way, and while they can see color, I see gray. Perfection has gradually become a constant problem for me. I was never truly happy with the art I'd make. Even though my friends and my family would tell me how beautiful my work was, all I could see was a mess of mistakes. I was working on a large painting one week, and at one point, I couldn't even look at it without wanting to cry. It felt like every time I touched it, the painting became uglier and uglier. I was at my observation one afternoon, and it was the first time I was observing the third grade class. Miss Zebko, the teacher, was playing a video where the class would follow along to draw a toucan. I hate it. One boy buried his face in his hands to hide the tears falling down his cheeks. I approached him, checking his toucan drawing, which had a small beak and little feet, but otherwise very much resembled a toucan. Hey, what's wrong? I asked. It looks terrible. What's terrible about it? It doesn't look like that. He pointed at the video screen. I knew exactly how this student felt, so I pulled up a chair and tried to get him back to working on his impressive drawing. You know what? I felt just like you last week. He sniffled, but I knew he was listening. I was making this huge painting, and I absolutely hated it. I cried over it, too. Can you believe it? And I'm going to school for art. The sniffling had stopped, but he continued staring at his paper. What I'm saying is, it's okay to cry over your art, no matter how experienced you are. But that doesn't mean you stop making art. If you look around the room like I did, you'll see that no one in the class has the same exact toucan. Yours is different, and you know what? That is so cool. No one else could make that except you. We talked about what other art he liked to make, which perked him up a bit, and soon all the tears had dried and the sniffles had stopped. I helped him find a fat eraser to erase the scribbles he had made in frustration, and by the end of class, he was asking Miss Zebko if he could take it home to keep working on it. Along with my self-doubt in my artwork, I felt it many times over the thought of me being a teacher. I more than once have questioned if I even possess the ability to teach art if I can't even understand my own. If art education means that I get to talk to kids and guide their art journey while finding pieces of myself, then I'm grateful that I get to become an art educator.